All right, so uh, welcome back. That's some new lighting and stuff. So it's probably all wrong. I haven't been bothered to adjust the colour balance and all that stuff. And I don't have a no notebook with me, so I'll use <laughs> literally the back of an envelope. But um, I've just been on the internet looking at this. This guy's done some research, and depending on the size of your delta loop and the shape, it changes the impedance a bit. I never really considered that. But what we're going to do is I've cut off 41 meters of Kevlar cord wire off of the reel here. And you probably can't see it very well. But what we're going to do is we're going to have 15 meters along the back and 13 here. So this is going to be a tiny bit longer. And that should, according to his calculations, bump the impedance up a bit. So we can use this blooming great big 4 to 1 ballon that Mike and I made last year which is very good fun I won't take it apart because you can watch the video <laughs> it's absolutely blooming massive so we should easily be able to put a kilowatt through this now as you can probably see there's a hole just here so that will be the main hoisty uppy because the ballon's going to go uh, in that point there we've got a number of different strain relief options so in each corner we need a little egg connector or oh, these are actually a bit lighter and a bit more sort of man size i think this is electric fence stuff all right so and i'm going to need four of them because we want one for each corner and then a couple close to the box with a little piece of cord holding it to this hole here and then a little fly lead coming to uh, the terminal uh, just here so with that i think what we've got to do if that's 13 meters and that's 13 meters and this is 15 meters what i've got here is i've, I've run off uh 41 meters of wire and i now wish i'd done 42 but i think we'll just get it in and i think i'm going to use these plastic ones here so we'll put the ceramic ones to one side bit heavier a bit more expensive but i've got other projects for that I did have a little doublet centre here, thinking I was going to use that, but this is so blooming massive, we'll, 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 we'll use this. So we'll hoist up each corner with the egg connectors, and then for the main, where the feed is going in this corner here, we'll, we'll pull it up. So there's a ton of trees outside. I've identified the three trees that I want to put it up, and that this should fit. I'd like to get it up 10 metres, 30 something feet um and that's going to be for another video because i, I just <laughs> i still haven't quite got my mind around it so if you remember i've got coax going to a box here and a box outside goes underground to another box where the genius eight by two switches and then i'll run a piece of coax through the woods and up to here all in all it's going to be about 80 meters of coax for this so 384 about 250 260 feet of wire but in the main this is 40 20 and a bit of reception i can live with 3 db loss if i need to all right so first things first let me measure and i've got some heat shrink and stuff as well let me measure out some wire and we'll mark it with a bit of insulation tape which i've got in my pocket and see how we get on so what do we need i need 13 one way and 13 the other way or 30 and i'll just mark these corners all right so i might stop the camera as i do this because you don't need to see me doing all this i'm sure mark that point there look so that is the 13 point now <laughs> what a mess i think i'm going to do 13 the other way as well at least it's not tangly wire i hate tangly wire right let me do all this and i'll come back to you okay so I've got one of the air connectors on. The reason I've put this on now is that we need to then take this end so we can twist this together just a little bit, put a bit of heat shrink, see that's got to go through here, put a bit of heat shrink on it and maybe a couple of mini cable ties and uh, we'll be away. Put that on there. I'll 
I'll show you what I mean and I'll heat it up. Come in. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm fast forwarding this bit because I'm just doing wire. Oh, right, okay, hold on then. Be easier for the, I don't know, <laughs> just be easier for us. More. Right, uh, you know, space, right, doing something like this outside. So I'm putting this little twist in it, and I've got my little Dremel torch, which will give a quick blast to. I don't want to overcook it, you know. So it's got glue in it, but in severe heat, it can slip a bit. And what I've noticed is that, because um, it has heat, it's never slipped with me before, apart from once, at the glue line. So um, let's make sure that's all. All glugged in nicely. And I'm going to put a couple of these on it. A couple of cable ties. Mini ones, you know. So that'll be pulling. Yeah, okay. I'm just worried that I've not thought this through. <laughs> but I think I have. Because it won't be overly taut, if you know what I mean. Right, so that's one side. What I'll do is I'll do the other one, and uh, and then we can focus on connecting this up. All right. So that's two done. So in the last video, I discussed this wire, Kevlar cord. So I mean, basically it's got Kevlar threads inside. Side. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. And uh, a copper braid on the outside. And I'm gonna do strain relief um, uh, like this, or like that. I'm not quite sure how <laughs> to do this strain relief. Anyway, uh, I'm just thinking this one through, actually. I might do it like this. Um, but then that will have to come back on itself, yes. The idea being, this is going to be loose. So if I do need to extend it, we can extend it on this loose bit. So I'll make that bit, say, what feels about right. Mm, 33 centimetres long. Let's put one of these all the way through here. And the other side. Do that again. 33. 33 feels about right. End to end. All right, 35. Hold it there. Thirty-five. So the wire, we've got enough, well, we haven't got enough to come back. That'll be close. All right, we'll have to go more. We will go half a metre, 50. That's plenty. And you'll see what I mean when this is up in a minute. So I think we'll do, we'll use a bit of paracord uh, to start the ball rolling, if you know what I mean. Let's just cut a piece off. <sighs> oh shit, will it go through there? <laughs> you know, this little hole here. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, it does, just. All right. Um, well, we'll tie, we'll tie a bow line, all right. Callum's favourite knot. Then we can always get it undone again. I did a video about knots. Oh, 
Well, while I'm connecting uh, this up, we'll just take the drone and fly outside. So I've got these three trees, and they're about 15 to 20 meters apart. And I'm fairly convinced that I should be able to fly the chuck a line, if you know what I mean, over, uh, so that uh, we we can you know get this up about 10 meters. I was aiming originally at seven meters, but um, another three meters, what's that, 10 feet or so, uh, would really, really help the pattern, particularly on 15 and 10, because that's the idea. So I have done that, a little bit of stretch in that, but it shouldn't matter and it shouldn't be frayed either. I just got to match the other side. Let's just give that a quick blast for neatness. So that goes flying off into the woods and this comes back and we've got a bit of spare. Excellent. So we'll put the, do the other one and I'll put the fork connectors on. Now Lockie next door has got my better strippers, but let's try, I'm not quite sure which notch we use. Oh, that'll do. It's a copper braid, there's threads inside it. All right, so let's put a little bit of uh, glue lined on. I'm not soldering today because now that I've got the right sort of crimper tools, I just don't need to. And then we'll pull that one back and we'll glue line it all on top. I'll do. So we won't get moisture in here because of the glue. It's under no tension anyway. Yeah, I can see glue coming out the end. Here's, I'm gonna get uh, three bits of paracord or mastrand, whatever. We'll fly the three, one, two, three, over the trees. Then we can connect this and then hopefully just pull it all back up through the trees, hopefully. So let's have a look now. That's under tension. This comes back and it should be able to connect fine. We'll connect it anyway, just loosely. Someone's gonna tell me that I ought to be using ring terminals. Doesn't really matter, I'll talk these up. They're not gonna come undone. Even if a uh, ring terminal came undone, you'd get a bad connection. So you don't want that, do you? If you talk it right, that's fine. It's not under any uh, pressure because these are just little flying leads, aren't they? Like that. One goes there, and one goes there. We're done. So there we are. Right, next one in this series is uh, let's fit it and test it and see what happens. Okay, so in the meantime, enjoy your radio. See you next time when we're out there with the drone and the cameras faffing around with bits of rope. All the best now. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.